Okay, folks, welcome back to some more Redstone Basics. I think we're going to try to cut down the length of these videos and get them to nice little bite-sized bits. So this time we're just going to talk about dispensers, droppers, and hoppers. And I'm probably going to get the names of those all tangled up and confused between each other. So I apologize if I do that during this video. Okay, so what I've got here is a set of droppers on this side and a set of hoppers on this side. Uh, they're kind of hard to t distinguish each other from the other side, so I'll show you their faces. Uh, again, I've got a custom texture pack, but even the default texture pack kind of has the same thing. It looks like there's a face on them, and the dispensers look a lot more angry than the droppers do. The droppers are much more happy. Uh, the reason being is that dispensers tend to use the items inside them. So you'll notice real quick we've got a water bucket, we've got some arrows, and some fire charges, and you might already get an idea of what's going to happen, so I'm going to power these. And there you go. So I fired an arrow, I fired a fire charge, and I used the water bucket. Uh, water bucket is now pouring over. Uh, but coincidentally, the way these things get powered is that they activate only upon receiving redstone signal. Uh, the continuous redstone signal doesn't mean anything, so uh, they won't actually... Uh, for, well, the best example is the water dispenser here. You'll notice that it's pouring over, and it won't stop pouring water until you activate it again. The reason being is because once it uses the water bucket, it's actually emptied it. So you notice we got an empty bucket in here. So we now need to use the empty bucket on the water block in front of it to uh, collect that water. So when I activate it again, the water goes away. So in most water retrieval systems that use dispensers to uh, dynamically place water blocks, uh, they actually have to be triggered twice in order to turn them on and off. Droppers behave in much the same way, except they never use the items that's inside them, they always drop them, hence the name dropper. So when I push this button, all those same contents actually just fly out and lay on the ground. That's it. And now lastly, I want to talk about hoppers. Uh, hoppers are made with iron and chests. You can look up on minecraftwiki.net for the recipe. Uh, that's sort of your ultimate resource if you're ever curious about the recipes for these things. But anyways, let's look at how these things behave. The hoppers are basically containers with five inventory slots, and they're meant to transport items in the uh, down and horizontal directions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this chicken egg in here, and you'll notice it immediately leaves it and goes into this chest. Uh, the hoppers have directionality to them. you notice they have these little ports on them, and the ports can face uh, in just about any direction, uh, they can, they, except for the up direction. So you notice I placed one here, and now it's pointed on the chest. I can place one in that direction. See, it's pointed off in that direction. And they can also be pointed down. So the hoppers are basically almost always going to transport items in the direction that they're pointed. And a quick tip about how to place these, if you hold shift, you will always place a block rather than doing something like looking at the contents of it. Uh, so it can become really frustrating if you're trying to place this hopper on another hopper and you keep looking at the contents. So just remember, always hold shift, and then you can place the blocks just fine. Another property of hoppers is that if I take an item, let's say like the egg again, and if I throw it on top of the hopper, it collects the, ho the egg and throws it into the chest just like it would if we placed it directly into the hopper. So that's a cool thing. Uh, hoppers are often used to collect loose items and send them to sorting facilities. So that's probably one of the main uses of hoppers, and you're going to have to get used to building a lot of these. Let's just say that. Another thing you can do with hoppers is use them to pull items out of other containers. So I've got a chest up here sitting on top of this hopper, which will pull items out of it and put it into this chest. So I'm going to take this sticky piston here, put it in here, and you'll notice that it immediately comes out and is sent into this chest. You can also place rails on top of hoppers. That's a great way to have a minecart with a chest come up on top of this rail here, and the hopper will pull all the items out of that minecart. And lastly, hoppers will respond to redstone signal. You notice I've got a lever here, and it's in the down on position, which means it's supplying redstone power to this block here, which means it's supplying redstone power to uh, the hopper itself. So you notice this hopper's not pulling anything out of it. Uh, it's not trying to put anything into this chest, but when I release the redstone signal, it's now deactivated. The hopper goes right on its way and starts putting items into the chest right here. Okay, folks, that does it for hoppers, droppers, and dispensers. I think I got the names right without ever screwing them up uh, during the video. So I'm proud of myself for that. And we'll catch you next time for more redstone basics. Next time we're going to talk about rails.